Earlier this year, there was a point where I've never felt older in the whole of my life. And that is when I was doing a little bit of gardening. You see, I got some dahlias, you know, nice little flowers, thought they looked good outside. Planted them out, and a week later, there were just sticks hanging out of the ground. And uh, the problem was that slugs got them. And this was the point, you see, where I, I raised my fist and I, well, actually, I didn't. I mean, this was in my mind, but I, I raised my fist and I said, damn you slugs for eating my dahlias. And yeah, do you know what? I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm old now. Um, there's a little bit of the story that I want to tell first, uh, but eventually it all ends up with me building a little hedgehog house made out of some tile samples that I've had laying around for the last couple of years. You know, it seemed a shame at the time to chuck them away, and now I think I've actually got a useful project for them. They look quite nice, and um, yeah, well, they need a little bit of a tile adhesive, so about six pounds worth of materials, and I've got something decent. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the story. Right, so uh, for those of you who've tried to get rid of slugs, you might know some of this, but um, yeah, normally you would probably go for some sort of slug killer, but this stuff is pretty awful. It's more likely to kill cats, dogs, and hedgehogs, so you know, that's actually been made illegal in the UK in about a year or so's time, for good reason as well, it's, it's horrible. Um, your other options are wall pellets, they're not that useful, um, things like eggshells, coffee is supposed to work, doesn't work for me. Um, you can also try these little copper strips that um, go around your plant pots, but this was in the ground, so instead I went for this copper fence. And you know what, it actually worked pretty well. Um, for the first month or two, I put it around my other plants and they were untouched. The problem is that a hungry slug won't care about a little copper fence. They will go over it if they really want the food. And um, I tried to look into the reasons for this. Uh, it's, uh, it's a bit of contention, I suppose, for those who want to nerd out with all the, the science bit behind it. But I, I think some people are saying, right, well, the copper conducts some sort of a uh, little, well, I don't know, it creates a little shock for the slugs and they don't like that. Personally, I, I don't really buy that theory. I mean, I'm not. I'm not a scientist or anything myself, but I don't understand how you're supposed to collect all this energy in the air and treat this copper like uh, some sort of capacitor. It doesn't, it, surely things don't work like that. However, I heard another theory is that slugs simply don't like getting, going across copper. It uh, wears them out. It's um, probably analogous to say, right, if you're hungry and you've got to walk down the street, pick up some food, that's fine, you can do that. And, um, you know, that, that would be the same as not having the fence. The fence is probably equivalent to having a, a, a hill in front of you and the food's on the other side of the hill. Now, regularly you probably think, well, I'm not gonna bother, there's food elsewhere, I'll just go there instead. Um, however, if you're absolutely starving and there's no other food around, well, there's a good chance you're gonna climb over that hill. Uh, it's the same sort of deal. And um, yeah, I found that the fences weren't that effective uh, after a long period of time. And uh, anyway, this is um, where I got to the point of thinking, well, what if people were right about that electricity thing? Maybe the small little current that's created from the air isn't enough. And that's where I thought, for anyone who may have watched my video from a year ago, which is highly unlikely, but I had this Tesla coil that um, I picked up off eBay. And I was thinking, right, well, what if I electrified the fence, right? That's a good idea, isn't it? Um, so, what we're going to do is just a little replicate this experiment. Um, I'd like to clarify, I didn't actually do this. This is just running from my head and I'm really glad I didn't follow it up. Anyway, here's the Tesla coil. It's a lovely little thing actually. And uh, for those, again, who didn't see the video, which is very likely, uh, this thing you can plug in an audio source and it'll actually turn the air into a speaker. I mean, that's pretty amazing, right? This is, it's a nerd's dream, this. And, um, have I got all the bits? That's the real question. Okay, this will teach me for just chucking boxes in the attic because uh, the bits I needed were just spewing all across the floor. Um, right, I'm gonna set this up though. And, um, miss another bit. One sec. Yeah, there's supposed to be like these little experiments you do where it glows, this little bulb will glow if you get it close. We'll look at that. 
that means it's dangerous, I think. Um, this one. There we go. Look at that. Don't get too close because then I'll regret it. Here's my plan of action. So, imagine this is my nice little dahlia or uh, marigold, wherever it might be. And I want to protect it with this mesh. I'm going to turn this off because it's put me on edge. You go over there. Right. Got my dahlia here. Yeah, my dahlia is. This is the copper mesh I was talking about. It's um, it's not crazy expensive on eBay, but it's a lot more user friendly, I think, if you've got uh, plants placed in the ground. Because um, that tape, well, I don't really know how you'd use the tape normally. What I did is just got some bamboo sticks and then kind of wrapped it around. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't really think this part through. I thought it was more solid, this stuff, you know? So, this is my plastic bowl, as you can see, and uh, it's highly technical experiment here. There you go, marigold. Broken neck. Um, again, this thing's going to be charged, isn't it? I can just... Bloody hate this thing. Um, right, got a crocodile clip here. It's a little coil of wire. It's going to go around there. Now, Again, I think, I think I'm just going to be repeating myself for a lot of this compared to the last video I made because I don't know huge amounts about electricity, which is, doesn't really bode well with me. And I've got, got these tongs, right? Got these tongs. And what I'll do is I'll hold on these little neons next to the tongs, next to the wire. If it turns on, that means it's working. If it doesn't, well, we shall see what happens if it doesn't. Okay, turn this on. Right. Look at that. There we go, we've got an electric fence now. Um, so slugs beware. Slugs beware. <laughs> to tell you what, we can do a lot better than this little neon light. What I've got here, some slugs in a jar, also known as pickled gherkins. These bloody awful. Can't stand them. I'll turn you off, says the ball. I might have to touch this and regret everything. Um, oh God. I can't believe people eat these things. Oh. <coughs> oh, it's awful. It's, oh. Seriously, people eat this crap. Nasty, nasty invention. They're just vegetarian slugs, these things. I mean, really. Why does anyone want them? Right, I've just got a cocktail stick. Oh my god, the smell. Come on. You can do it. Yeah, there we go. No, I'm not gonna do it. Alright, I'm gonna sharpen the tip of this. Yeah, look, I feel like I can go all bare grills on this thing, man. Just whittling the tip of a bloody um, kebab stick. Just so I can pickle a gherkin or you know, fry a gherkin. Things you do, right? Things I do. Hey! Is that what everyone always wanted, right? Gherkin on a stick. Lovely. So, we're going to have to use our imaginations here, right, people? Because um, I wasn't feeling nasty enough to get a real slapping stick on the stick. I wanted to do after they eat my day is. Imagine slug is feeling hungry. Ooh, what have we got here? Nice little dahlia. Yeah, I'll go for that. And ooh, here we have a look at this close up. Comes over and nothing. It does. Does nothing. It's a gaggle. gonna have to assume that does something and I don't want to touch it for the sake of you sick buggers because I know some will want to see me fry myself on that. The slug's gotta go past this Tesla coil to eat my 
lovely little dahlias that I've just planted. It's coming in. Ooh, purple. All right, let's check this one out. Boom, right, on fire. That slug is now on fire and I'm happy about that. It, it, I mean, it, it may still have some life in it to go, oh, okay, away I go. And it won't return to feed on this delightful treat. Um, I don't know what happens if you leave it there longer. Yeah, I don't think I can do this to a real slug. More specifically, I don't think I want to have this hanging around in the garden. It's, um, it's lovely, but uh, there's a very good chance I will get electrocuted or it will, um... <laughs> this wouldn't really be practical. Brilliant though, I mean, the concept's there, right? You know. Okay, so yeah, I should probably stop trying to electrocute slugs on the video and get on with the main part, which is building a hedgehog house. You see, hedgehogs, they will eat slugs for a snack, and uh, there's nothing better than just to remove the problem in the first place. So, if I don't have slugs in the garden, well, then there's not going to be any eaten flowers, so I think that's the perfect solution. Now you might be thinking, okay, well Pete, look, it's too late. We're in December now, and you can't get any more dahlias at this time of year. You're very right. But the thing is, hedgehogs like to hibernate over winter. They may have already done so, but if they're still walking about wondering if there's a, a warm, dry place to go, well then, they'll be in luck. And as a reward, next year, I will be slug free. So, you know, Big brain activity going on here. I think that would be a good idea. Um, like I say though, I'll use up some tiles. Won't cost me much. I think it will look good. So um, yeah, let's go over to the build. Okay, so here we are, ready to make this hedgehog house out of some tiles that I've had laying around for, well, quite some time. As you can see, they've been left outside to weather. Um, some of them look a little nicer than others. Uh, it's definitely not an example of a nice one, so I'm just going to give these a bit of a clean. As you'll be able to see on the other camera here, what I want to do is make a very basic square or rectangular house and um, ideally use as few cuts as possible because firstly, I've not cut tile before and I have the impression that I'm probably going to break something. Um, also, you know how loads of people got really nice things for Christmas? Well, I'll tell you what I got. A cold. A nice lovely cold which um, really isn't that nice so I want to keep this video short I want to keep this whole project a lot shorter than potentially I could do so I'm gonna do as few cuts as possible probably have a runny nose throughout this video um, I'll try to hide that don't worry uh, anyway so if we look at this here what I'm trying to do is basically making up a rectangular structure that I'm just gonna hold together with some quick grip clamps and then I might be able to see a little better on this side actually. So when I have a right angle, I'm just going to put some tile adhesive in the corner there. Effectively, what I'm hoping is that I can use tile adhesive that I've had laying around as pretty much like cement. And that hopefully will keep the whole structure together. So first few little dabs of tile adhesive, we'll just hold it in place and then I'm going to smooth over the hole inside with more tile adhesive. So really the tiles are just aesthetic, they're not holding it together or structural in any way. Um, it doesn't need to be incredibly strong, I'm not walking over it. So um, yeah, that's, that's the plan. We're going to see how that goes because today I'm just going to make up the rough structure, clean up these tiles and uh, yeah, I think we're just going to play a lot of this project by ear. So. First things first, let's give these tiles a good old clean. Um, right. Yeah, they're not they're really not that bad. I'm not trying to scrape off all the green that's accumulated, just give them a nice fresh start. <laughs> okay, um yeah. Okay, so I will clean these ones up, but that's basically gonna be the base of it. So I have a few of these external floor tiles that are ridiculously thick. Uh, I think they're about 15, maybe even 20 mil. Um, the little uh, circular saw that I have really isn't gonna do too well on this. Well, 
I don't think it will anyway. So um, these are just going to be used as the base for everything to build upon. Just in case you're wondering why I've got all these tile samples. So I renovated my house a couple of years ago and um, when doing so I thought right well I really don't know what I want so I ordered all these different things and I think a, a tile like this you only spend about four pounds maybe on one of them. A lot of these are actually free just pay for postage so if you want to make something out of just some odd tiles uh, it's really not going to cost you a lot. All of this stuff here together is probably about 15 pounds of stuff and in the end I actually bought some of these for the house so you know it has a double purpose. What I'm thinking is using some of these wide tiles, I think they're like 15 by, I have a tape measure around there somewhere, they're about 15 by 30 or something like that, 15 by 40 in fact. So yeah, two of these, uh, front and back, and then I have some other tiles here. These ones, they're more like around 20 by 15, so they'll be the side ones. Um, then um, I'm going to do a sloped roof on this. But I think what I'm going to just focus on today is just getting the sort of square rectangular structure done. And um, to do that, you can see it on this camera here. Uh, yeah, let's see. I'm going to start with this tile at the back. Nice, cool blue. And then these side tiles here. I think they look pretty, pretty nice. They're actually the same tiles as uh, the base of this whole thing. Um, actually, I thought I was going to use two of these large tiles, but now I think about it, that's probably not the best idea. I do need to make an entrance to this thing. I did have a little think about this earlier, and there's a couple of options. One is I cut one of these large tiles down, but the thing is, ideally, uh, you probably want the entrance to be around about 13 centimetres, and that's only going to leave a thin sliver uh, of tile, so it's likely going to break. Um, with one of these thicker tiles, I think I could probably get away with it. But again, the tool that I've got, which is small, it's like a hobby circular saw, probably about blade 50, 50 mil, something, right, 55 mil, it's tiny. Um, that's not really gonna do the trick with these thick tiles. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I have these smaller tiles. I think, again, these are maybe 15 centimeters. I'll just actually say on the back. These are 15 by 75, so I should be able to... Do you know what? This is what I love about tiles. They, they all just come in nice little size that you can interchange. It's a bit like Lego. It makes things nice and easy. So with these smaller tiles, I should be able to get away with three of them lined up like so. And now, with just three tiles like this, it should leave an entrance of around 15 by 15 centimetres, which is ideal for even the fattest of hedgehogs out there. They won't have a problem. Now, there's sort of a Goldilocks sort of zone, I guess you could say, with the size of the hole uh, for one of these. You want it to be big enough that you can get your chubby hedgehogs through, but not so big that something like a fox will get inside. Uh, there's another thing I'm going to do to make that a little harder for foxes, actually. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but yeah, you don't want them too small either so that your hedgehog can't get in. Uh, so yeah, 15 by 15 centimetres. You could probably get away with around about 11, maybe 13, but I'm going to stick with this because I'm not allowed to cut anything. Um, right, so that's going to be the entrance. That's going to be the back of it. And on top of the entrance, there's going to be another tile, probably this one here. And that one will go on the top there. And then I'll have a pitched roof. Um, yeah. So that will be there. Get my quick grip clamp here. And then I'm going to use this small tile here. And if I'm lucky, I should be able to do this all one handed. Come on, there we go. By the way, these grips are absolutely brilliant. I use them for so many things. And um, definitely the best tool I've picked up. So yeah, if you are trying to do these things and you're struggling doing it one-handed, just pick up a quick grip there. Blimmin' amazing. Um, this one here, quick grip. 
So right, there is the square structure. There's another little tile that's got to go right next to the small tile here. I'm hoping the adhesive is going to be enough just to run a bead of it up there and it should just dry like cement. I'm just using uh, this Farset adhesive. Um, it's supposed to be okay for internal and external. As far as I know, it is kind of like a cement mix anyway. Uh, I think it does have some sort of Portland inside. I'm gonna mix up this little pot, add around about one fifth of water to every, well, is that right? So yeah, five parts adhesive, one part water. So if I use about that much water, fill it up completely. Hopefully that should be all right. Let's see. So I've probably got around about a third of this pot. I don't know if you can see, around about that. Uh, I'm just gonna add little bits of water and mix up into more of a paste. I think that should be all right. I don't, I'm hoping you don't need to be crazy exact with this. I mean, again, if this was structural in some ways, I would be a lot, lot more careful, but you know, it's, it should be fine. Worst case scenario, a cat might jump on top of it. It's, I think it will survive that. I'm pretty happy with that consistency. It's more like a um, very thick treacle. I should really think of a, a better thing to compare it to, but yeah, it seems pretty well mixed. That will uh, smooth around this quite well. It will be sort of more like a clay actually, uh, using that. So it'll be nice and easy to work with. Um, yeah, I'm, a lot of this is guesswork. Like there might be people watching this right now going, oh you fool, this is not gonna work. Um, check, I take the mask off now. Uh, but this is an all experiment for me. I've, I've not used a tile adhesive before. Um, but yeah, I had uh, loads left over. In fact, this is a whole new packet that I just had laying around and it would just be a shame just to let it go off and nothing really to happen with it. So um, yeah, I will see how this goes um, just by doing this bit first and then revisiting this tomorrow or maybe in three hours. It's supposed to be a quick set thing, so I guess we'll see how that goes. Um, all right, gloves on. A glove is on because of course, I've just chucked it somewhere random. There we go. Um, is it just me or just, does everyone else just have a pair of gloves and just think, whatever, just chuck them somewhere and then you regret it later because you know you're gonna have to go on a little search. Well, I'm always doing that. Keys, gloves, whatever. It's, it's gonna get chucked and I'm gonna get annoyed with myself. This is almost identical to dough um, right now. It's perfect. So you can probably see best in that corner. So what I'm doing is just smearing this tile adhesive into the corner, pushing into all the gaps there. And this is more just to hold the structure together. Um, tomorrow, what I'm gonna do is a second layer, maybe even a third, and um, that's when the base tiles will be on and the whole thing will be, well, solid with tile adhesive. I've just realized this hole is a lot bigger than it needs to be. That's all right, I've got more of these tiles. There's plenty of tiles here, so I don't know why I need to worry. Um, oh, that's why I need to worry, because it doesn't fit. Ugh, silly me. Oh dear. Well, it's still... Actually, I think I've got a way around this. An easier way around this, anyway. So what I'm thinking is using more of this adhesive and then I have all these little like glass beads. That might look quite nice. Yeah, I'll do that. So I'm just pushing through some of this adhesive here. Now, I know it's not really grout, um, mainly because I, I think the difference is really the consistency and I don't know, maybe if one's Actually, I have no idea what the difference is between grout and adhesive. I know you can get ones which work sort of in unison, like you can use both as grout and adhesive. Um, but I think you wouldn't use them, I, would, I, I don't think you'd use an adhesive for grout, mainly for cosmetic reasons, but maybe I'm completely wrong on that. 
It's very likely I'm completely wrong on that. So, do you know what? Don't listen to me. What I'm doing is just smoothing over a, a layer of this adhesive and um, I'm hoping that should do the trick. Remember, this is just to hold it in place right now. I will be going over the hole inside with more of this adhesive and um, that should really keep things nice and strong. What I'm thinking is, right, have a few more of these tiles and I don't want to waste them. So these are actually gonna be pretty useful. What I'm thinking is just using the back of them because the adhesive won't really stick to this uh, shiny porcelain side. So um, yeah, if you can see on the camera here, if I put that to the side like that, it will make it a lot easier to stick on these glass beads. I, have to, I should have two of these tiles around somewhere, there'll be another one laying about. And um, yeah, what I'll do is the same sort of thing, uh, put that on that side there, and then I can put these glass beads, and um, yeah, that should look, that should look decent. And it means I can do this right now, I don't have to wait for things to dry, I don't have to make anything new, I don't want to make anything new, that's that's for sure. Um, so yeah, let's, let's do that. I'm going to pick up this other tile. And then uh, go from there. I think I got these for a fish tank ages ago, and well, the fish tank broke, so now I've a load of glass beads. Just gonna place some of this adhesive on here, like so, and then I'm just gonna stick it onto the back of the other tile. I don't think I need a huge amount of gap on that. Um, something like that would do pretty nicely. What I'm going to do is put a load more of this adhesive on the inside bit of this. Now, I suppose at this point I could use like coloured adhesive if I had it. Um, that's the thing, I don't have any coloured adhesive. And the whole point of this is just to recycle what I've already got. So I'm not going to buy any more stuff for it. Um, but uh, I'm thinking that over time this will weather really nicely. Uh, I've made sure I've got no fungicides or anything inside the adhesive. So I don't think it will kill off uh, anything. And it might even have moss grow on there. So that would look really nice. Yeah, I think that should look really nice. similar pattern on the other side so start with blue at the bottom and then we'll finish with another one of these light blues so yeah I'm actually pretty happy with that I think that looks a lot better than it would have been if it was just some random tiles that were cut so yeah I know it doesn't look 100% great right now what I'm going to do is smooth this off a little bit but tomorrow when it's all dry, I'm going to treat this like grout, go over it, have a nice smooth finish and polish up those uh, little little gems a little bit. Within an hour or so, I've managed to put this all together. And bear in mind, it always takes longer when you're trying to film what you're doing. I think, honestly, this is about half an hour of work to do this. And then tomorrow, what I'm going to do is a pitched roof. So I've got these long, thin tiles here. And what I'm going to do is, you can put you see on the camera here, is they're going to go up like that. And then there's going to be another tile underneath. Um, I haven't quite decided what tile I'm going to use yet, um, how it's all going to look. That's all a bit up in the air at the moment. Um, or maybe I should just do that now. Actually, what, yeah, what might be good is if I just do the whole roof separately, and that way maybe once a year or whatever it is that I'm going to have to clean this out I'll have just a whole removable roof um, yeah that's definitely a better idea I'm going to do that okay so I've decided it's probably not my best interest to be lazy um, it's a bit of a habit of mine just to say oh I'll do it the next day and then well the next day comes and I don't really do it so let's just get this roof sorted now because it's not actually going to take that long what I've got is this tile here which 
isn't that interesting, might as well just use the base of it. It's actually quite lightweight as well. So I don't know if you can see on this camera here. This is going to be the underside of the roof. And then I'm going to stick the roof tiles on top, like so. There's one just here. So what this will do is it will just keep them all together, but perhaps most importantly, there will be a bit of an edge here. I don't know if you can see it now, you'll be able to see it. Let's zoom in now. So there's an edge that's now created that allow me to place this tile on the bottom here. So it's adhesive on here. There we go, that's the start of the roof. Like I say, I'm not gonna do the rest of it right now because it's all just gonna fall apart in my hands. Um, I'll wait for that to dry. So it's the next day and uh, yep, still freezing cold. However, my cold is gone, which is great. It's a 24 hour thing and I'm happy about that. So we're back to this whole setup here. Things are looking a little drier than it was before. I mean, I'm not quite sure I believe it's quick set as it says, because this still looks kind of wet, but um, yeah, let's have, a look. let's have a feel, see how strong it is, I mean, well, actually, can you even see it on the camera? The fact that I can lift it up and it's not falling off, well, that makes me happy. It means it's all bonded together. I think I might just stick with that. Um, I had this idea of adding in like a little window as well, but I don't think it needs it. And more to the point, I don't think a hedgehog's really going to appreciate loads of light coming into its little home. I think the allure of having a whole hedgehog house is that it is kind of a bit dark and some more secretive for the hedgehog. They don't want it to be available to for everyone to see. Uh, speaking of which, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned earlier in the video, or at least I'm not sure what's going to be in the edit, but um, what I was thinking is it'd be great if there was sort of a more of like a partition wall inside. So what I'm thinking is if I put another bit of tile uh, down here and what that will do is it will give like a nice sort of bedding area there. Uh, they can go right there if they want to but um, at very least it means that it's going to be more secluded. Or actually I do have these little off cuts of um, more tiles that was used for the um, toilet in the end. That would work quite nicely if I put it at an angle. Um, the real benefit of that is that hedgehogs can go in, they can walk all the way around there, but a predator would really struggle. I mean, a, a cat's not going to be able to go around that, that corner there. So I think that would be be the decent thing to, <laughs> to do, I think, for the hedgehog. I think they'd, they'd appreciate that. So to complete this project, what I'm going to do is put another tile on the underside of that. So this is now just nice and strong. Um, and it does make the whole project so much simpler. That can just be placed on top. It's not going to blow over easily in the wind. This thing's going to weigh probably about three kilos or something. Um, and the wind's going to really struggle getting under that. Uh, so yeah, let's do that. And then, um, yeah, I'll reinforce all the inside of this with more adhesive. There will be a base to all of this and um, that will definitely make it a lot more rigid. But as I've just seen, um, this all needs reinforcing on the top. So what I might do for that is if I'd, I've got some little square tiles, these would work quite well if I just use them in the corner. Oh, would it look good if I have a little bit of a, a little bit of a roof hanging out. Does that look good? Um, <laughs> this is where it'd be great if I did something like this live or whatever, you know, I could actually ask people on the go. Instead, I'm just talking to myself and I'm just going to do it. And you'll you'll probably hate me afterwards. You'll be like, Pete, that looks rubbish. But I think a bit of an overhang, it looks good. I like that. I said to myself, I'd, I'd do this all. I'd do this all before Christmas, be ready. And I'm going to put up these Christmas lights and it'll look really nice and Christmassy. But no, I've been lazy. I haven't done that. Um, but I have got a little Christmas tree with all these little fairy lights. And you know what? I think they'll look really nice. 
if I put them in front of all these glass beads so they'll sort of glow at night even all year round I think that will still be a nice little touch okay I think I might have applied that a little bit too thick <laughs> Oops, definitely doesn't smush out as easy as hoped. In fact, it just breaks tiles. Don't know if you saw that. Great. Oh, as you see, it's all, it's all looking rough and dirty there. This is like one of those cleaning adverts, you know, where you have a really horrible looking hob, and then some wipes this magic cloth over, and everything looks good again. Look at that. Or even better, on the white bit here. Check this out. Ah, oh, light new. Check it out. It's pretty much all the same thing that's gonna go on. So, putting adhesive across these bits here, placing the tile down. Once that's all, well, actually no, there is a little bit more to this one. Um, there's a bit of tile that I'll be putting down here. So I'm going to put that down there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. So yeah, sorry, I'm going to put this bit down here. Then um, put some adhesive in the corner. Um, just round about where my thumb's wiggling there. And then I'm going to place this down with more adhesive on the top of this tile. So that will keep it all in place. And then uh, when it actually comes around to putting this all together, I'm just going to plaster the whole of the inside with more adhesive when those big tiles are down. And that will make things super, super strong. So that is the plan. So on this tile here, what I'm doing is literally just putting a big old glob of adhesive into each of the sides. Yeah, like so. And the main reason for this is because these tiles are slightly different heights in the corners and really you're not going to be able to see this so it doesn't matter. That's just going to go on like so. There we go. And then I'm going to smooth it down around the corners here. Okay, so everything's been fully stuck down with the adhesive and I'm just gonna walk you through what's actually going on here because it is pretty messy. Right, so I've stuck this down here um, using the same method of just pretty much dabbing on a large amount of adhesive then cleaning up the sides. Um, if you're wondering what this random tile is doing in the middle, it's holding up that little divider bit that I talked about earlier. You can just about see it through there. I put a load more adhesive on these glass beads and as you can see the whole thing just now needs a little bit of clean up. So I'm going to get back this cloth. Uh, these are bamboo cloths by the way, just in case anyone's wondering. Uh, you can get them off eBay or whatever and they're, they're cheaper and more resilient than the paper ones and if you rinse them out thoroughly you can reuse them as well. So I think they're a lot better for the job. Uh, potentially better for the environment if you can actually get second use out of them. Yeah, I think I'm probably about a good 80% of the way there now. And um, it's still not looking 100%, so you're just going to have to imagine, just try to imagine what it could look like. So it's going to have the roof on top, um, it's going to be a bead of uh, more of this adhesive, and then I'm going to put some more glass beads, some lights on it. Again, I think I'm going to do that one... Actually, I've probably got enough time to do that one today. Okay, so this is all propped up. It's just the edge of the roof here. And I just plaster on some of this adhesive here. I say some, it's quite a lot of adhesive. Onto the edge. And I'm just going to place the little, little gems onto the side as I did with the front of the house. So as you can see, I'm just very lightly press them into the adhesive here. I know that's going to focus on it. Come on. You can do it. Right, there we go. So I'm literally just placing these down. Right there, I don't know if this wants to focus. Are you going to focus on this? This nice, fine work of art here. There we go, lovely. 
So, I'm just placing these lightly down into the adhesive there. And what I'll likely do is just revisit this tomorrow. I'm going to put a bit more of this adhesive on, just around the outside of it. And that will help secure everything in place. In the last bit of video you just saw, I thought I would just spend, you know, 10 minutes and then that'll be me done for the day. Um, but no, I've been inspired now. I've just finished work and I want to get this finished. So I put all these beads or gems, I'm not quite sure what they're called, all across the roof here. And what I want to do is just make sure this structure is nice and strong So I'm going to put it outside tomorrow and finish it all there. I'm also hoping that rolling up my sleeves is enough to stop my clothes getting ruined. So, you know, wishful thinking and whatnot. Um, right, so hopefully you can see on this camera here that everything is looking reasonably solid. Um, now, this is the part I'm not too sure how I'm going to achieve. But what I want to do is move this whole thing without it collapsing and then somehow slide the towels under. Hopefully it's just strong enough I can lift it up actually. Let's see. Please don't fall apart on me. Okay, that was kind of promising actually. Just move the bag that stuck to it. That actually was a lot easier than I thought. So um, whoever says that? No one. Today's my day. Tell you what, actually, uh, I'm going to put a bit of wood under this because tomorrow when I move it all around it's going to be a lot easier just to pick up a piece of wood rather than somehow picking up three tiles. It's just a good idea, right? Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see any of that in the shot, but um, I think it's just about to see it. What I'm going to do is literally just apply this adhesive to the inside. I think it looks quite nice having a clean line on the outside. Um, so I'd rather not get adhesive on the tiles around the outside of this if I can, get, if I can avoid it. You're really not going to be able to see what's going on in this camera here, so effectively literally just taking more adhesive and I'm putting it into the sort of bottom and the corners of the um, of the house here. Because as I found from the sides of this, it's pretty strong. I think it's gonna hold everything really nicely in place. You could just prop up these tiles on some bricks, and I'm sure hedgehogs would be more than happy with that. Do you know what? If I had to eat slugs all the time, I'd want a nice house. You know, that's all I'm going to say. I think, you know, it's the least I could do. And thus concludes the hedgehog house. Well, pretty much most of it. I've got to put it outside, and then I'm going to put up some little lights. But that, that should just be finishing touches. I think it's pretty much there. I'm just going to let it dry. And uh, yeah, this should, this should look good. Hedgehogs, if they don't like this, I'm going to be very disappointed. I had to do this for them. <laughs> yeah. Maybe use gloves next time, I guess. Maybe I should have just stuck using gloves. Anyway. It's the following day, and just as before, I'm not really going to bother setting up all the cameras because I'm going to just put this straight outside. I'm pretty sure it's ready now. Everything's looking nice and solid on the base. Pretty happy with the design. This is what the roof looks like now, with the little glass beads on top. It should look pretty nice when it's all together. Let's put this outside and hope that it doesn't fall apart from just me transporting it about. As you can see, it's still drying a little bit, but everything is pretty solid. I've got these little solar lights that I thought would look really nice. I'm just going to show you these. So. They're these little copper string lights, but these ones have uh, apparently a waterproof coating on them and can work outside. So what we're probably looking at is, let's see, I have the same kind of, right, I will do this, I will show you the final thing in the dark as well. But uh, yeah, that's what we're looking at. They should look real nice. And uh, since it is still 
kind of Christmas, or at least I started making this around Christmas. I'm gonna put a little Christmas tree right by it. A few of these little lights up around the top here, maybe some around the side. I mean, it's a pretty long string of them. Ah, the winter. Everything looks all dead and crispy, but <laughs> I think I found a place that will look good when the summer comes. And that is just down here. So there'll be a little bit of overgrowth, which the hedgehogs are gonna love. It's nice and shady. Plus, I can still see the brilliance of the, the tile house that I've made. Right, so I'm just gonna have to dig a square here. I'm only gonna do this very, very roughly. And try to do this one-handed as well. But yeah, what I'm gonna do here is just probably take off around about an inch of the soil there. Just keep it nice and loose so I can then just easily slide the thing in place, put a little bit of soil around the outside. And uh, yeah, maybe a few little tiles in front. Move some of this Irish moss elsewhere. There's a random onion growing there, you know, as you do. Lovely. It's doing well. Okay, it's finally down and I'm glad I didn't get a video of that because it was very undignified. Probably weighs about 30 odd kilos, I'd say, but it's awkward more than anything. Didn't have to use that plywood board. This um, adhesive is so solid that even the broken tiles inside have still just stuck to themselves. Um, yeah, I'm literally just going to put some of this soil underneath and um, try to blend it in a little bit more. So I might put some of this Irish moss around the side, put a few little tiles around here. And uh, yeah, I just realized I've taken out all this soil, but actually it'll probably look good if it was on the same level. Um, so I'm gonna do that. So I've somewhat submerged this into the soil here a little bit of this Irish moss here and now I'm just gonna put a few of these tiles just the ones that remain very very loosely in the ground I think it'd be nice just have like a little bit of a walkway and also these tiles they're really not doing anything so why not eh? you get this sort of idea I'm just gonna place them down a bit more of this Irish moss this should look real nice when it's all covered this area here this is somewhat embedded nice bit of I don't know, foliage? Yeah, foliage. And a random onion. It's all gonna look pretty nice. And the lid is on. As I started this project around Christmas, I got this little Christmas tree. A little bit late for it now, but hey, the thought is there. So what I'm gonna do is pop this up. This nice little um, ceramic pot. Yeah. And put some of these LED lights around it. And thus, it will be complete. Almost there. What I'm going to do is spiral some of this copper LED wire around the tree from the top. When it gets to the bottom here, it's going to go up around the side, carry around the back, and just going to keep circling around until I've run out of wire. And then the next shot you'll see is what it looks like at night. <laughs> 